like to call the meeting of the Santa County Board of Commissioners regular meeting to order for December 17, 2012 at 7 o'clock p.m. I'd like to welcome those in attendance tonight and those who may be watching in delayed TV tomorrow. As usual, I want to uh, welcome our media who are here and thank them for being faithful in attending. And at this time, I'll ask uh, Commissioner Donovan for the invocation. I, um, I like Christmas music one song that's been a favorite of mine for a long time that maybe is not as joyful in some respects as others and it, uh, it's called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play, from wild and sweet the words repeat, peace on earth good will to men there's a couple of verses in there that say in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will to men then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. I want us to think a little bit tonight about the fact of what's going on in our world. And even in the very first chapter, of the very first book of the Bible, Moses tells us a story of sin coming into the human family. And the consequences of it were massive. Adam and Eve, in fact, by their sin, set in motion a spiritual avalanche that carries the whole human race down and buries them in death. Here is the explanation of what the world is, the way it is. Everything that is bad and evil and corrupt and devastating and deadly is because of what happened in the third chapter of Genesis. We've all been plunged into spiritual death. We've all been plunged into physical death from that moment until now. We were all born dying and dead, dead spiritually, dying physically, we have no hope of life if all we have is the fall. In Genesis 3.15, God, even before he places the curse on mankind, promises from the seed of a woman, one that will come and crush the head of that tempter that brought sin into the world. And from that chapter on, the rest of the Bible is the record of God's grace and mercy, and love and kindness to sinners. The rest of the Bible is full of God's appeals to sinners to repent of their sins merciful, gracious, loving, and will grant forgiveness. From here on is a story about God's love and mercy and grace. And that's the story we seek this Christmas time because unto us a Savior is born. And wise men still seek him. Let me pray. Father, we have been um, devastated over the last number of days about events that have happened in our country and the lives of so many young children being taken. Lord, tonight that we not concentrate so much on a single event as the fact that in our world every day sin brings death and brings frustration that people take advantage, advantage of one another there's murder there's uh, robbery help us as we uh, work through this event in our country's history as we work through the d days and the events of every day, that we might seek the very one who you've provided for us that is a Savior and that can defeat sin in our individual lives, that of our communities, in our country, and around the world. Father, we ask that you bring Christmas to our hearts this year and do it in a way that makes us, that uh, impacts us and allows us to share that with everybody else. Lord, I always ask that you give the people that are elected, especially those sitting up here, wisdom to do the right thing for all the people and to impact their world in such a way that they might be encouraged and that they might have hope. We pray these things in your son's name. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Donovan, for those words. At uh, this time, uh, we will have some adjustments to the agenda. There is an add-on to be put on uh, in the consent agenda. We'll make that uh, B. It is for tax refunds. Uh, so we'll add that on. Uh, and there are some questions to the minutes that you have that when we do the consent agenda, then we will note that they are as amended. Anybody else have anything for adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. So the motion for Commissioner uh, Dennis, second by uh, Commissioner Morton. Any discussion? 
player will say aye. aye. All those who oppose, no. The ayes have it. They are approved. Our first agenda item will be a presentation of the proposed secondary road construction program for this uh, coming year from uh, Mr. Mark uh, Morgan. And welcome, Mark, from the uh, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank all the commissioners for allowing us to come here and present this before you tonight. What you have before you for consideration is our 2012-2013 fiscal year secondary road construction program. Uh, a little late bringing it in, the uh, legislators changed the rules on us this year a little bit with the, the budget, and so we had to back up and do some punting to make sure our numbers would work out right. <clears throat> but what you see before you uh, and what has changed with the House Bill uh, 950, which was the budget proposal, that was put together was we normally have dirt roads on here to be paved throughout the county based on the county priority uh, they took for one budget year being through june 30th of 2013 being that budget year this year and put everything that was still on our unpaved road system as a statewide priority uh, they allocated or pulled off the top 12.7 million dollars from the highway trust fund and then based the statewide priority on the individual county priorities I guess it depends on what county you're in as to whether it played out. Stanley County did not fare very well this year because we did not receive any roads within that statewide priority. Uh, the division as a whole in the five counties got four roads, uh, Mecklenburg being one and Cabarrus got three. Uh, it was supposedly going to be for one year, one budget year, and as they redo the budget for next year, it would supposedly be going back to the countywide, uh, the old system that we have priority of the dirt roads. That's yet to be seen. This is our reprioritization year. We reprioritize all the dirt roads every four years, and we have just finished that and put this together for the uh, Raleigh office as well as the legislators to take a look at. As far as Stanley County goes, uh, if it stays on a statewide priority, Stanley should fare very well because actually out of the next 20 roads on the list, Stanley has five of them that will be funded next year if they do that. If not, if we go back to the old way, we should hopefully still receive funds enough to pave at least three to four of those five. So we're waiting to see how that comes out. What we were granted through the highway fund and through the trust fund, you see before you the $705,975 we have on the second page identified four paved road programs where we will be going in and widening the existing roads uh, and then resurfacing. And that's what you have before you now as proposal for consideration. Is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions or comments for Mark? Yeah, be thankful for what we got, I guess. <laughs> it was a lean year, very lean year this year. And we do have a, a resolution uh, to approve a uh, full entertainer a motion. So motion by Commissioner Dennis, second by Commissioner uh, Shudo. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. And the ayes have it. Thank you, Mark, and uh, appreciate the work. Thank you all very you. much. Y'all have a great evening. Our next agenda item will be a presentation regarding the North Carolina Ambulance Career Center by Mr. Charles Cal Charlie, Charlie Cosgrove. Uh, he's here with us who works out there in uh, at Viper. Welcome, Charlie. Thank you so much. Uh, before I begin my pre presentation, there's a couple of thank yous that are in order. I'd like to thank our county manager, Andy Lucas, for his sound counsel during the past year. He's made himself easily accessible to those at Pfeiffer and has given us some good advice. I'd also like to thank Tyler. Uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here this evening. She gave me some good counsel and helped in the preparation of the program. My two partners were supposed to be here this evening, but both of them are grandparents. And uh, mom and dad had to go to work and they're watching the kids. But I, I need to tell you something about uh, the three of us. We're often referred to as the three musketeers, uh, Curly <laughs> Curly Moe, <laughs> you know the rest of it. <laughs> um, Joe Catrone uh, served on a um, uh, command cruiser in the Atlantic Fleet, at one time hosted uh, President Johnson, and served admirably for uh, his tour of duty. Um, Jerry uh, Pion retired from the Air Force and uh, has been the commander of AMBETS Post 910 at least a half a dozen times. He uh, has been the uh, state commander for the AMVETS and the recipient of the AMVET of the Year Award for North Carolina. 
Just as for myself, most of you know me, I put in 30 years, retired out of Fort Bragg, uh, graduated ahead of my class out of the Sergeant Majors Academy, and have been a major, major pain in the neck since I retired. Um, I would refer to you to page two of the handout. You understand our motivation. It is in memory of gratitude for those who are serving and have served in our country. Page three. And I'm quoting Winston Churchill, never in the field of human conflict has so much been owed by so many to so few. World War II, 11.2% of, of our population served during four years. They were drafted or volunteers. Vietnam was 4.3% that served during a 12-year period. They were drafted or volunteers. The global war on terror, which was official after 9-11, Less than half percent of our total population has served or is serving in the military. They are all volunteers. Most of the troops that have been mobilized for uh, to Iraq, Afghanistan, and Kuwait are from the Guard and Reserves. I want to share a personal experience. Most of them have been activated at least twice. Richard Cogswell, Sergeant First Class, was my neighbor. He was stationed at the Niven Center out here on East Main. When I met him, he was, had just come back from the second tour in Iraq. The Niven Center closed. He was transferred to Salisbury. He came to me and he said, Charlie, I've been mobilized a third time. Will you take care of my son while I'm gone? Bucky. He gave me a power of attorney, and throughout that boy's junior year and senior year, he was my son. Fortunately, Richard did get back just in time for the graduation. That young man has since moved to Ohio. He's pursuing a, a college education at high school and works in a manufacturing facility. Richard was mobilized for the fourth time. I've talked to soldiers at Fort Bragg, Marines at Camp Lejeune. I've talked to young, young men and women that serve in the New London Air National Guard facility. They've been mobilized two, three, up to six times. In the meantime, there was no disruption in my life. I didn't have to buy war bonds. Nothing was rationed. There were no metal drives. There was no rationing. Life just went on. I'd like to address your attention to the next page. We've been keeping track of these figures since about mid-2011. The figures have been rounded off for presentation purposes and have been averaged, but I assure you they are correct within three-tenths of a percent. In the United States, the average unemployment ran at 8 percent officially. North Carolina ran at 10 percent, Cabarrus County 9 percent, Rowan County 10 percent, Stanley County 9 percent. Veterans between the ages of 18 and 24 was 22 percent, Hispanics it was 17 percent. Veterans between 25 to 34, 13 percent. Blacks, it was 14 percent. White veterans, it was 12 percent. The overall unemployment rate between veterans was averaged out at 12 percent. Over that 18-month period, unemployment among our veterans was 5 percent higher than officially reported. I direct your attention to the footnotes. The unemployment rate for Iraq and Afghanistan era veterans averaged 12.1 percent as compared to an average of 8 percent of eligible workers. The unemployment rate for those that were com in combat zone is 11.6 percent as compared to those to 8.6 percent for those who had served elsewhere. Among those unemployed, veterans that is, 14.4 percent have 60 percent uh, connected disabilities. 12.2 have less than 30 percent, 12 percent have none. Guard and Reserve unemployment rates are 9.1 percent for those mobilized since 9-11, while jobless rates for all veterans of this generation averaged about 12 percent. In 2012, weekly unemployment claims fluctuated between 360,000 to 390,000 per week. That information was gotten from the Department of Labor, the North Carolina Department of Commerce, and the North Carolina Employment Security. Last May, I became, as an AMVET, I, and, and, and by the way, I forgot to mention, 
that I wear several hats. I am the Stanley County representative for the North Carolina Committee for the Guard and Reserves. I am the Stanley County Chamber of Commerce Veterans Representative, and I am the commander for the North Carolina uh, AMS Career Center, the first in North Carolina. We became aware of a grant to open up a career center. Six states were in consideration. I found out later that North Carolina was a targeted state. California, Iowa, Maryland, New Jersey, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania were eventually selected. The purpose of the career centers was to serve uh, as firemen brigades following a, pro uh, following a pattern that had been set during the Korean War by our Marines, where they filled in gaps in the line. Our original mission was careers and, j and jobs. We were to provide veteran employment assistance. We were dedicated on December 7, 2011. We opened on January 2nd of this year with a grant of $2,362.56. The organizing partners, Bank of Stanley, Bill Allhorn, Chamber of Commerce, Tom Ramsor, Pfeiffer University, Michael Miller, operating partners, Stanley County Veterans Services Office, Rod Barbie, who I think is here right now, and he'll get upset when I tell you this, none come better. That man is extremely dedicated to his task. Frankie Morton of our unemployment office, ditto very dedicated to veterans. Corporate sponsors, Albemarle Applebee's, Chris Solomon, general manager, Food Line. Now, there, were th there are three stores involved. That is the East Albemarle store, the North uh, Albemarle store, and the Richfield store. Let me tell you how they got involved. One of our slogans is, come vi visit us for bad coffee and stale donuts. That is in the tradition of the Red Cross donut dollies. Any of you that have ever served in the military, when you got on that plane or that train or that boat, there's a Red Cross worker putting a hot cup of coffee in your hand and donuts that weighed 1,000 pounds. Cake donuts. They sunk to the bottom, but God, they, they taste good. I see uh, Tony shaking his head. He's been there. Legislators. Uh, Kay Hagan. She helped us get our American flag that hangs in our office. Uh, uh, William Purcell got us our North Carolina flag. Justin Burr and Congressman Kissel. I might add that Congressman Kissel sent me an email advising me that he's, he has uh, informed uh, the incoming uh, Congressman Hudson, right, his name, that about our program they will contact us. I've already received an email from the gov governor-elect, his veterans representative. They want to talk to us after he's sworn into office. And I bring your attention to the next page. This is who we are. We're at North Carolina Ambest Career Center 1. We're located at Pfeiffer University, the Stokes Student Center on the second floor. Our telephone number is 704-463-3026. There's our email address. We are there on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 2, 2 p.m. This is our mission. We are a nonprofit veterans organization providing volunteer general counseling and educational career job assistance to active duty, guard, reserves, and veterans who have honorably served in the U.S. military. Before I go to the next page, we, we were surprised at what happened to us. Our original mission, as I told you, was to help with careers and jobs. We are now the clearinghouse for all veterans' information in Stanley County. We can communicate with 150 Agencies, organizations, and individuals with a single keystroke. Four newspapers and two radio stations. Uh, our county manager is on that. And he, he's get, you're getting inundated. We're at once a week now. Once a week, we're sending something out. Rowan County has asked us to visit with them. Cabarrus County, Union County, and I'm missing another county. They've all contacted us and asked us to visit with them. Next year, uh, they want us to see, they want to duplicate what we're doing. Now, I, I say to you, they just made a phone call. Our mission, which is the next page, to enhance communications, consensus building, networking, and partnerships by connecting members of our active duty, guard, reserves, and veterans to those that can provide opportunities for a rewarding life. Goals. 
to enhance the efforts of the various agencies, organizations, and individuals that support those who are serving or have served on active duty, guard reserves, and vet veterans by streamlining access to resources and services. And next page. The ant we have to we submit a monthly report to AMVETS National in Washington, D.C. through our chain of command. That would be the Piedmont District, North Carolina State, and up to National. They place a dollar value on services. You don't get money. It's just a means of measurement. I would direct you your attention to the very last line on that report. We only have three volunteers. This is as of November 15th. We have put in 1,486 hours, valued at $21.79, $32,369.94 value. Miles, 8,389 miles at $0.14 cents a uh, mile. We know that that is very conservative. The bottom line is this. For an investment of $2,362.56, the value of the program at national level is $33,554. Ladies and gentlemen, I assure you that figure will be much higher when we finish out our report in December. Where are we now? This is where we are. The White House has made it very clear. Our military force is going to be reduced by 20% within commuting distance we have fort bragg 108th division headquarters in charlotte 145th wing air national guard in charlotte three air squadrons in new london a air helicopter squad uh command in Sol uh, salisbury two army reserve units in salisbury four army reserve units in cabarrus and special forces is just located I've talked to these men and women. Less than a week ago, I met a sergeant first class right here on College Drive. He had a backpack, which I admired. I said, man, I'd like to have that. He says, I'll give it to you in 90 days. I said, what do you mean? He says, I've just been identified. I will not be allowed to complete my 30-year career. I will retire at 26 years. I said, why? He says, I don't know. I could tell you other stories about Marines, National Guard people. Their, pr their careers are being prematurely cut. I had this morning, I was at the Red Cross, and we talked about it. She says, we're going to be slam dunked in the next five years. They're coming back to an economy that is going to struggle. But here's the upside. I worked with drill sergeants. I saw men. I saw boys become men. I worked with the Marines. I saw men to become Marines. They're coming back mature. They got the soft skills that industry's looking for. They'll be on the job on time. They'll follow instructions. They'll give you their best efforts. They're reliable. They're dependable. And more importantly, they're trained. That's the opportunity that stands before us. And here's the challenge that we have at the Career Center. Our volunteers work for bad coffee and stale donuts. Our volunteers, between the three of us, are averaging $250 to $300 a month out of our pockets. I'm explaining, not complaining. They do it because they have their own reason. Patriotism, to recognize somebody, a comrade they lost, my two closest friends, did not come back from Iraq. The challenge we're facing, we've got to expand our volunteer base. It's coming. The other challenge is fundraising, and that brings me to the last page of my presentation. Veterans respond. We wanted a fundraiser, so veterans stepped up, said, how about a raffle? One week in Cancun, five-star facility plus $500 between July 27th and August the 3rd for a family of four, we only printed 800 tickets. If you would like to buy a ticket, I have some. Or if you're an employer 
or you know someone. We've had a couple companies that have bought blocks of tickets, 5, 10, and 20 at a time. I'm only making a suggestion. Or you got my, e my address. I wouldn't object to getting your check in the mail. And another recommend, something I'd ask you to consider. We'd like for, we would like to partner with you. Again, a suggestion or recommendation. A grant to get us through the, to, uh, 2013. And thereafter, for, we think this problem's going to be with us for five years, a matching grant. For every dollar we raise up to an amount that you've set as our commissioners, we match. So if we raise a dollar, you match the dollar up to a, up to a given amount. And of course, we will, we will give you a report of our progress and activities at an interval which you, you set. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Any questions? You want to have a question or comment for Charlie? I think it's a great report. And, Thank you. Uh, I will tell everyone that uh, I've already bought a ticket. Uh, I know you not, did. Not tonight, but uh, early on. So uh, I have helped a little bit. But, you are uh, an easy touch. Uh, yes. <laughs> Very easy will, touch. Uh, we'll certainly take all this under advisement and uh, see if there's something we can come up with. I won't make any promises to this board. Because I didn't expect any. And I know you didn't, but uh, those that heard uh, Charlie tonight, uh, if, if you can help, if you can be a volunteer or whatever, I know they'd appreciate you. Yes, I'd like to extend an invitation to each and all of you to come visit us on Monday, Wednesday, Friday between 10 to 2 for a bad cup of coffee, because I make it, and some stale donuts courtesy of Food Lion. Uh, that door is always open to you. So come visit us, and finally, have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you, Charlie. Merry Christmas to you. Next on our agenda will be a presentation from Ms. Candace Moffitt, our director of the Average Civic Center, and I think she's got something pretty exciting to tell us, and uh, we're anxious to hear it. Welcome, Candace, and to those who are here and supporting you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all for uh, allowing me to speak to you this evening. We're all really excited about uh, the presentation we're about to show you. Uh, if you'll bear with me just a moment, we will get this underway. I don't know if we can get that up for the audience to see, but you should have have uh, this information in your packets uh, as well as hopefully in front of you. Um, the steering committee's recently been formed at the AgriCivic Center to explore the feasibility, development, and fundraising for a livestock arena at the Stanley County AgriCivic Center. Uh, our committee members are comprised of um, staff from a couple of different agencies and community volunteers, and some of them are with us tonight. Uh, those committee members are Mr. Jim Cameron, Curtis Farr, Marcus Harwood, Steve Lemons, Reggie Medlin, Frank Simpson, and myself. Um, tonight we'd like to receive your approval to proceed with the arena project. Um, I have a very small visual, I apologize this did not make it into the PowerPoint presentation, but uh, at, the, at the bottom of this is uh, the original site plan, and you'll see on the original Civic Center. Uh, the main facility is the square block you see here to the right in the corner of Mead Road and Clinton Road. There were also plans for the chess block and the barn uh, Obviously the site's never been fully developed and um, this committee is interested in further developing the site. Um, we would like to build a facility that's attractive, uh, functional, and will meet the needs of the agricultural groups in Stanley and surrounding counties. We're also interested, of course, in sustainability and long-term operational expenses. Um, right now, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Steve Lemons. Uh, many of you know him already, but he is the livestock agent for North Carolina Cooperative Extension. He'll speak to you a little bit about the livestock shows this past year. Welcome, Steve. Thank, thank you, and thank you, Candace. Um, Hopefully before you, you see the pictures of some of the youth, this particular show was done in conjunction with the Friends of the Agri Civic Center and Agri Civic Days this past August. Uh, really big success. You, you can see there we, we, we got a tent and uh, lots of panels and a lot of community support there. 
to help get that put together, uh, water trucks and, and all, all sorts of equipment. Um, that, that was done through our Stanley County Youth Livestock and Poultry Council, which uh, works closely with the Stanley County Cattlemen's Association. And um, this show actually had 87 youth participating, 51 youth in showing goats, 26 youth showing cattle, and 10 youth showing sheep. And um, you can see you can see the, the faces of these kids, and, and not only did these kids come from Stanley County, but other surrounding counties as well. Uh, they brought parents and older and younger siblings and grandparents to the Agri-Civic Day event, and, and just an overall really, really good event. Um, also wanted to mention the possibilities of other livestock shows, FFA and 4-H events at this particular facility, uh, you know, are, are good possibilities. Livestock judging events, horse shows, um, you know, youth 4-H horse shows or such. So, so it's not just a facility for this one particular show. It could be a, a multi-use type, type facility for our youth. Um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce Miss Brooke Harbor. She is the daughter of Marcus and Patty Harbor from Richfield. Brooke actually recently gave her or, or resigned her crown as Miss American. Uh, Angus represented the Angus uh, beef cattle breed and represented Stanley County in North Carolina very well. She's actually a, uh, a, a junior, a junior at North Carolina State now, and, and she would just like to talk to you a few moments about her experiences in the livestock showing. Welcome. Hi. Um, as you said, my name is Brooke Howard. I'm 19 years old, and um, I'm currently at NC State pursuing a degree in agricultural business management. Um, I've been showing livestock for almost seven years now and they asked me to kind of just tell you a little bit about what showing livestock has meant to me and kind of the impact it's had on my life. Um, if they knew what I was going to say they probably wouldn't let me talk because I could talk for hours about it, <laughs> um, but I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. Um, when I began showing livestock seven years ago, it was actually after my four younger sisters had already started and I had no idea what it would do for my life and what it would be to me now. Over the past seven years, I have learned many life lessons and developed many character traits that I believe directly relate to showing livestock. Some of these include responsibility, a strong work ethic, teamwork, public speaking skills, time management, leadership, and the list goes on and on. Um, these lessons and traits have helped me achieve many things in the agricultural world, as Steve mentioned. Um, I just finished my term in November as Miss American Angus, which is an ambassador program for the American Angus Association for one youth member across the country. I had the opportunity to travel to many different events. I don't think I stayed in Raleigh for one weekend um, while I was in college, so it wasn't a normal college freshman year or last year. Um, I traveled to probably over 10 or 12 states within the year and um, got to meet a lot of people throughout the year. Um, I've also served three years as president as the North Carolina Junior Angus Association, and this summer I will be our candidate for our national board of directors. Um, but other than just this agricultural world, I think these traits have also helped me um, from the other side of things. In high school, I was class president for four years and our National Honor Society president my senior year. And I truly, truly believe that if it wasn't for the skills that I gained through showing livestock, I wouldn't have been able to achieve those positions. Um, as he showed the pictures on the screen, um, I know Steve talked about it a little bit, but I just kind of wanted to mention it um, because it really shows two great things about showing livestock. One, the actual show in Stanley County. I know we had people come from a far, as far away as Sampson County. They got up at like three that morning and left their house by four just to come to Stanley County for a show. And they got there before I did, and I lived 20 minutes away from the site. So um, they're really dedicated and coming, but it also shows the friendships that you gain through showing livestock. And that's truly one of the things that has mattered the most to me the past seven years. Some of my closest friends today live as far away as Idaho and Kansas, Wisconsin, Michigan, and these are people that I talk to on a weekly basis almost, either through texting, social media, things like that. But they're people I would have never had the opportunity to meet if it wasn't through starting showing livestock at just simply the county level. Um, so to close it off, in my opinion, showing livestock is unlike any other sport or activity that kids can participate in today because it's more than just a sport or activity. It really is a way of life. 
And more than that, it provides kids with the skills needed to succeed in whatever they decide to do throughout their entire lives. Beside my faith and my family, um, I believe it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, and I really hope y'all take this into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alice Brooke and Steve. <clears throat> um, phase one of the uh, Livestock Arena uh, will be an open shelter. Uh, hopefully you have that slide in front of you. Um, just an open, sh open shelter. We anticipate uh, this phase of the project will cost between one hundred and fifty and two hundred thousand um, dollars. Our committee's goal is to raise this money privately uh, to build phase one through donations and grants. The photos at the bottom of this slide uh, show the potential for expansion, and that could mean enclosing in the facility, um, adding in. Um, you can see a, an actual show taking place down there, the bottom right. Table in front of you, which would be slide six in your handout if you're looking at the hard copy, shows the projected annual operational cost. Uh, this was the part that Andy and I, I think, were most interested in when we started talking about this. Um, it's it's uh, fairly low for what we believe a uh, larger return on the investment for what we'll have to spend annually to upkeep it by way of uh, electricity and housekeeping and insurance. Um, there is revenue potential with this uh, facility, uh, with rental, and as you know, there's potential for increased sales tax revenue generated from show participants visiting from out of town. <clears throat> this slide shows you uh, just a, a sample of what the potential would be when we do expand the facility, hopefully again with private money. You can see show rings, multi-purpose rooms, bathrooms, serve through kitchen, and meeting space. Again, um, the diversification of the types of events that could be held at this facility. The Friends of the Agri Civic Center will support our fundraising efforts by accepting tax deductible donations for this project. They are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Mr. Reggie Medlin he is here. He's our current president of the Friends of the Agri Civic Center, and he's going to say just a few words about the partnership with this committee and uh, the FACC. I would like to preface <clears throat> the very few remarks I'm going to make by uh, saying to Commissioner Dunavant that I appreciate that humble and fervent prayer, something I believe we need more of in this society today. As president of the Friends of the Agri Civic Center, and uh, we have worked with you directly and indirectly, most directly with Andy over the past couple of years, um, when we had Agri Civic Day this year and we we term it a great success. Anytime we can pull better than 2,500 people in Stanley County uh, for something like that, we thought it was a great event. But we saw something um, when these guys had to put up a tent to have this event under, and the consensus of opinion was between Candace and Curtis and Steve and myself and some others, we can do better than that. I try to be the eternal optimist. Uh, we'd like to have the opportunity, and that's all we're asking you for tonight, the opportunity to do just that, to put up a facility here in the county that will be here for posterity, something we can all be proud of. And uh, with that, uh, as I think most of you know today, the largest industry, if you want to term it that, in Stanley County today is agriculture. That's where we are. We don't have much manufacturing anymore. It's down with agriculture is our big one. So we want to support these young people like Brooke and those that are coming behind her in any way we can, and we think this is an excellent way to do that. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, Reggie. Thank you. So again, uh, we're here tonight uh, to, to request your approval to move forward with the project. We'd like to start working right away on our fundraising efforts, uh, and now I would like to answer any questions uh, you may have or if you have um, immediate questions or, or if you, after seeing this, anything's come to mind that you need more information about to help you make a decision. Anyone have a question or comment? I, I just have a comment, Candace. The only thing I would caution y'all on is be sure on your headroom because you don't give them one chance to get your height right. I noticed you got it 12 foot at the eaves and 
that sounds pretty high, but if you're going to have a horse show, that might get a little low. So if you go to 16 foot at the eaves, it's going to cost you a little bit more. But if you're, are you referring to the diagram yes, with the bolt? Uh -huh. That was just a sample. I, I, just I apologize. Make sure you didn't, yeah. didn't stick to 12. No, we are that's not married to that tight. by any means. <laughs> that's <laughs> going to be a little tight on you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Just a real quick question. I know it's with bleachers and stuff. Um, I mean, people would fit in something like that. Like it really depends on the uh, the uh, end size. Uh, we kicked around uh, informally a, a size of 100 by 150. That would be ideal, and um, that would give us ample showroom. And I'll, I'll defer to Steve on this. I, we went with that size, Steve. Can I ask him to help with that? Yes, it, it, it would depend somewhat on the the actual event that's taking place. Um, for example, our, our tent area this past year was um, of this approximate size. It's a little bit smaller, uh, but we uh, depend on the size of the arena that you would need. Uh, on a livestock show, there would be a, a lot of seating capacity around that particular livestock show. If it opened up into a, a horse show, then this size would be uh, somewhat limited. But the exact numbers is pretty hard to say, depending on what which event it might be. I was just wondering. Also, I was just thinking this was what would be good for people like Brooke and them. You always hear about kids going off to college and not being able to find anything to come back to. I know in the agriculture thing, a lot of people have family farms and stuff like that. It's good to be able to have the kids go off to college and then to be able to come back, back home to Stanley County. Mr. Chairman, um, where else are there um, facilities like this nearby? There's a very nice arena in Fletcher that we would like to have a, a site visit to. Uh, they have uh, not only an arena but other multi-purpose areas. Uh, we've considered site visits there. Of course, there's the Cabarrus Arena, but they're really into a different type of event than we specialize in. I really think this one will be unique for our media area. And uh, Steve, can you think of any within a 10-county area? He, he, doesn't, he doesn't really have to answer that because you, you've answered my, my question. Okay. Is that there are none near, near here. And so this makes it more important for us to seek this and certainly wish to do so. One of our committee, thank you. One of our committee members who's not here tonight has actually received inquiries from some groups in South Carolina, um, just south of Charlotte. Um, they're looking for a place to show in, in their media area. You know, Stanley County is a great location. It's just you know building the the structures here to support the kinds of activities that we are we're greatly positioned to host. It's just having the facilities to support them. And I also think that uh, we have the amenities with the with our hotels and, and uh, eating establishments that would enhance this. So, uh, and just one thought, you know, I, I know that uh, I went to a, uh, a dog show over at the arena, and that's something pretty big, but. There were folks there from California and Texas mm -hmm. from other places, so something like this could bring in folks from a, from a long distance. So it, it sounds exciting. Anyone else have a question or comment? If not, I think they're looking for an approval, and I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve them uh, moving forward. I have a motion by Commissioner Dennis. I have a second, second by Commissioner Donovan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no, and the ayes have it. Please, Thank you very uh, much. Continue, and we wish you the best of luck. And Thank you. We'll keep you posted on our fundraising progress. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Our last item is the consent agenda, and I'll remind you that we do have to add on for uh, some tax refunds, and there's were a couple of uh, corrections in the minutes from the last meeting that have been corrected, and you have those copies too. Uh, it was a pleasure to board. Motion to approve is presented by, uh, or as amended, I might say, by Commissioner uh, Dennis. Second by. Second by Commissioner Donovan. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Those opposed, no, and the ayes have it. I can't remember when to turn this thing off and when to turn it on. At this time, we are open for public comments uh, from the public. I guess that's what public comments are. Right? So, uh, you have something you'd like to share I ask you to come forward give us your name uh, where you're from and please try to limit your comments to about three minutes I welcome anyone who wants to speak
Hi, I'm Vanessa Mullinix. I think most of you know who Welcome I am. Uh, I'm just here to plead with this county to please come together. Uh, this is the last meeting of the year and quit the fighting, settle this with uh, this licensing issue with Alcoa. You know, I've, I've got documentation in the car I didn't bring in. I was running a little bit late, but I have been working for 20 years, since 1993, coming up, we're on 2013, on trying to bring tourism, bring people to this county. And I hear you set up here talking about how you want to bring people in, but yet you've been fighting to keep people out. We've done a lot of damage to our county by all the bad publicity that we've gotten on how dirty our lakes are and so forth. This is all being taken care of now. Um, the expansion of Mara Mountain, there was a huge article, I've got it in the car if you want to see it, that was in the paper in 1994 about the expansion of Mara Mountain and what that would do to this area. The Adkins Lakes PD project, they had the state do a study and was going to bring 35,500 tourism jobs to this area. Central Park, which became uh, the Adkins Lakes PD project, became Central Park. Uh, when I called, they had 17 jobs. I was corrected. They have created 40 jobs in 17 years. This is, this is not where we want to go. And when you, when you hear of all the fight and fight, and nobody wants to come to this county. We have a beautiful county. We have lots of great assets, but yet we keep working against them. And I just plead with y'all, this is the last meeting of this year. For God's sakes, can we not please start the new year out working together? And for the betterment of this county. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Anyone else? Seeing none, is there a commissioner that has uh, something they'd like to say? Commissioner Shuda. So, you know, just got a couple of things. First of all, I just want to report back. I went to the ADDC meeting. Y'all appointed me to that board th today. And I was on the ADDC committee back about seven or eight years ago when I was the president of the downtown um, business association. So this is my first time back in like six or seven years, first time since Kathy Almond has taken charge. And what a difference that she, she is just doing a great job down there. I mean, they, they took on the Christmas parade was about to drop. I think it was either this year or last year is the first time they took on the Christmas parade. And in the last couple of weeks, they, they had the Christmas parade, the tour of homes and the Alamo downtown Christmas, three big projects. And she's just done a a really fabulous job down there. Um, second thing, a couple things. What I was going to do, because a lot of people always ask me how much we've been spending on the relicensing matter. So what I'm going to do is until we get this thing resolved, I'm going to try to at least once a month have the Stanley County relicensing meter and give people enough, kind of like the national debt clock, you know, just kind of keep people up, the public updated on how much we spent and, and on this project. And um, so far it's been $5 million. $31,395 has been spent on the relicensing issue with the dams. And um, the projected budgets, and I know, I guess they amended to, to kind of update, you know, as, as they go over budget. Um, this year alone, they we budgeted $50,000. And five months into the year, this, this is from November figures, we're at $38,028 for what we spent so far. And, um, I just look forward with trying to move forward on this issue and get things settled. So I know all, all up and down the river, folks have settled and they're kind of waiting on us to get this thing resolved. So, you know, I know we're, so if we're looking at it from the region, we're just, we're just trying to help, help move Stanley County forward by getting this resolved. Anyone else? Chair, we'll entertain a motion at this time to recess uh, this meeting and go into closed session to uh, consult with our attorney in accordance with GS 143-318-11, little a, little, uh, three, to discuss the 401 Water Quality Committee intervention in APGI's public records lawsuit. Uh, so here, motion. So a motion to recess, go to closed session with Commissioner Dennis. Have a second. Second by Commissioner Morton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you time we are recessed. We're going into closed session.